What's happening, Magnesites? All right, so listen. I have an email from a troubled Magnesite. She's got some questions on her mind. We're going to answer them. Now, I wasn't going to do this with Sarah, but I said, you know, it might be good to get a female perspective on this particular situation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the email. I'm going to say what I got to say. Then I'm going to give Sarah her turn, all right? She's going to close the show out. All right, so it says, it's entitled Video Request. It says, hey, Tyrone. I'm a big fan of your work. You seem to enjoy helping your subscribers get through the toughest times, but at the same time, you always find a way to keep it nice and entertaining for the rest of your subs. Thank you. Anyway, there are some things I'd like to run across you because I like your opinion on the matter. Now, about me, well, I love Anne Frank. I mean, I love her. She's my idol. She gets me through the darkest times when I feel like there's nothing left and I think I love her so much because I always feel alone. I always feel like nobody gets me. I grew up without a father and for the vast majority of, the, of my time in school since a child, I was a pretty big loner. While our sense of loning, loneliness is completely different, mine being mostly emotional and hers being physically, hiding from the Nazis for two years and emotional. I think the feeling of being alone, period, is what drew us together. I think many times Anne also felt misunderstood, much like myself. Not to mention I was 16, I was 16 years old when I first read her diary and she died when she was only 15. So I felt a lot like, felt like a lot of the times she was talking directly to me. Since we were so close, uh, I related so much with some of her struggles. I felt so real. It felt so real. Anyways, years later, I still love her, and more than ever, I've even changed my middle name to her first name. I own a lot of Anne Frank memorabilia, such as signed pictures of actresses that used to play her in movies, and I own some movies about her on DVD. My mom thinks that I am obsessed, but I think for once in my life, I found somebody just like me. Do you think I feel this way because of my lack of social interaction growing up. My mom tells me that is what it is, but I don't know. Do I need help or am I perfectly fine the way I am? Now you saw Sarah shaking her head the whole time, right? Um, here's, here's my point, okay? Here's my point of view. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, and not making fun of you. You're going through something. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times when you are lost, when you're lost and you're trying to find yourself because you feel alone, sometimes you latch on to somebody and sometimes you try to take on their personality. Mm -hmm. You try to become them. Yep. You try to become someone who you are not. Yep. Now, it's nothing wrong with... Someone who you admire. Exactly. It's nothing wrong with admiring her and saying, you know, maybe I want to take these little things from her life. Like, myself. Like... I admire everybody. Come on now, y'all know me well enough you to know. The I'm rock. Like, Shut your mouth, Jabroni. I'm not done talking. So, yeah, I admire The Rock. I admire Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Sylvester Stallone. I admire the most out of every single celebrity out there. I look at these men's stories. I look at where they came from, what they went through. I like bottom to the top type of stories. When I look at Sylvester, man, and you look at Arnold and, and you know, like Arnold is the greatest action movie star of all time, at least he's considered that. Let me tell you something. Stallone, if he hasn't already, is going to knock him off his pedestal. Because the man looks movies. better than me and he's almost 70. You got what I'm yeah. saying? So movies. what I do is I can take from these men. I can take their drive. I, you know, um, I can take maybe the way they present themselves or the way they speak a little bit, but make it my own. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, I'm not going to take like, for instance, who I, I like the way The Rock talks. All right. But I'm not going to sit here every time. And you know something, Magnesites, The Rock says, the mag says this. Shut your mouth, Sarah. Like that's stealing this shit. You know what I mean? I only do it once in a while because it's fun imitating people that I like. I do a lot of different imitations. But what I'm saying is. Use them as a uh, platform. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, a measuring stick. That's what you may want to use her as. 
But I would never change my, my name to Dwayne. I would never change my last name, middle name to Johnson. I would never change my first name to Stallone or my last name to Balboa or, you know, Rocky. I would, you know, I would never do that. Sylvester will never be my name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, as a guy looking at it, I'm not going to lie. Like, especially if you start looking for a boyfriend at some time. Like, if I, if I was talking to you and you told me, you know, I've been so alone. And once I read her books, I felt so, you know... Everything that you told me in that letter, I might back away. Normal, a lot of guys would be scared of that. They would think that you got problems, okay? Um, another thing, I, I just, I just want to say, I don't think you're crazy. I don't. I don't think you're crazy. I just think that, yes, you were lonely, you latched on to something, but just grow as an individual from now on. Grow as an individual, get out there, meet people. I know it can be hard. The easiest way to meet people is to join groups that have the same interests as you. Whether it's a book club, whether it's art, whether it's, uh, you know, I don't know, CrossFit gym, whether it's gymnastics, whatever it is, painting, growing flowers, I don't know. But that's a way to meet people and meet new friends, and that way, you're not alone There's ever again. The, the beauty of the internet is that you can find people just like you everywhere. So I, I understand that you related to her, and yes, she was a real person, and yes, she is to be admired. But what strikes me most about your email is that you're living in the past. You're not living in this present moment. Um, you're, you're latching her on to yeah. her past. And trying to make it your own, you're trying to view yourself as heroic, and you want to be admired by others. You want to be recognized and seen by others. Anne Frank was recognized and seen by others because she has this diary that we found, and now she's famous, and she's admired mm -hmm. for what she went through and the hardships that she went through. But do you think that Anne Frank would have stayed hidden if she were still alive today? I know that was a long time ago, but... What I'm saying is, once if, if she were to get out of that situation, do you think that she would have been a loner for the rest of her life? She would have moved on and carried on with her life, had a family, yeah. whatever. And so you're, you're taking famous. this moment in Anne Frank's life when she was 15. Right. Now, think I don't know how old you are now, but think about the other 15-year-olds that you knew and how different their lives are now that they're 30, 35, mm -hmm. than they were when they were 15. I mean... It seems like you're stuck in this 16-year-old mindset where I'm an adolescent, I'm struggling, I'm alone. And that's something that we all go through as adolescents. Mm -hmm. You feel you're changing, your body's changing, yeah. your emotions are changing, you feel weird, you feel like nobody likes you. It's time to move past that. you got to live in the present moment and say, you know what, I'm a healthy, functioning adult. And I'm gonna go out, and I'm gonna find other people like me. And no, you're not. You're not crazy, but you're just. You're stuck in this. You're skipping yeah. on the record. You're stuck on the track. Yeah. I'm lonely. You're I'm lonely. End up I'm lonely. And lonely if you don't stop thinking I'm lonely, I'm just gonna be lonely. You're gonna be a self-fulfilled prophecy. Mm -hmm. You have to stop saying I'm lonely. I'm a loner. Stop calling yourself a loner. Yeah. You're not a loner. As long as you tell yourself you're a loner, you'll, you'll continue to be a loner. Exactly. Trust, trust you me. will draw to you yeah. loneliness. Mm -hmm. And more sadness. And all you will have is Anne Frank to comfort you. You're just going to have a person in a book. I mean, I know she was a real person, and I know you admire her, and yeah. I'm not downplaying what she went through at all. Yeah. But, I mean, if you don't take action now, you're going to end up being the crazy cat lady on The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know? You don't want to be that. And like Tyrone said, from a, from a guy standpoint... Guys are going to see that and be like, whoa, yeah. she's got emotional baggage. Yeah. I don't know if I want to deal don't with this. Ever, don't tell anyone ever again that you changed your name because I ain't Frank. I'm serious, don't. Because unless you've been with somebody for or friends with for somebody for time. a few years, yeah. don't tell them that because yeah. they're going to think that you're crazy. Although I yeah. know you're not, they're yeah. going to think that you are. Yeah. Another thing, too, what I was going to say um, with the whole, um, we're all... A composite of different personalities. Absolutely. Your parents, your, your aunts, your, your uncles, people you meet. You just don't want to become one, one person, person. and yeah. steal who they are. Take from her her courage, know? 
yeah. take from yeah. her, her perseverance, inspiration, all that, and stuff, use you know? that to push forward. Do you think that if you were friends with Anne Frank when she was 15 and you were 16, do you think she would say to you, "Yes, you should be alone for the rest of your life. It's just you in this world, and um, you know, yeah. carry on that way." And no. By she the would. way, you are obsessed with her. That's you obsession. Are. That's obsession. It is. Yeah, obsession. It is. You know. And it's it's be you're locked in. It's something. to a point where I would say it's unhealthy. Yeah, and you became passionate about because it. Because it's 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 unhealthy because it's holding you back from progressing and growing yeah. as a person. You don't want to be Anne Frank. You don't. Look you look at how good. she ended up. You don't want to yeah, end up yeah. like that, right? Yeah. You know. Her story is And even though in a she ways, she but, she yeah. died because of you know the Nazi circumstances, you're going to end up killing yourself mm -hmm. in emotionally internally yeah. if you don't. Take a second and think, I need to grow. You yeah. know, eat. there's t-shirts that say, I love being a nerd, I love being a geek, even if even if you're like, I'm a bookworm and this is what I love. I run a book yeah. club. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a book nerd. I love books. <laughs> yeah. He makes fun of me all the time, but I'm okay with that because I have <laughs> six or seven other people that all love books too. And you know what? When you get together, you feel good, you talk about the books, and it's a fun time. You know, so do what you gotta do. Reach out. And nerdy girls are freaky. Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> really? She said I always make it fun. Make it fun. And enjoyable. So and I enjoyable. threw the fun in there. So, nerdy um, girls one are thing, freaky. Like, you know, if you go back and you think about it, like a lot of your people, and I don't idolize anyone. anyone. I admire people. I look up to them. Because when you idolize them, you worship them. Yeah. Okay, you make them a god, you make them something that they're not. But I look at, like, Stallone or The Rock. They both came from broke circumstances. I can identify with that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And There's they nothing both wrong with greatness. identifying with someone. Yeah. But realize I this. Say, you know what? They did it. There Shit. are people. I can do it. There are real live people right now that identify with your loneliness. Right. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you seek them out because loneliness and loneliness, yeah. that's just a recipe for suicide. You don't want to do together. that, you know? Please, please, please keep talking, Sarah. Please. <laughs> Reach out, find people that do want to be friends, um, but you, you definitely don't want to find please. more people that are I'm lonely. sorry. Please get this book. That will help this, you. This, oh my God, this will help you so much. Breaking the habit of being yourself, how to lose your mind and create a new one. Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let me tell you something. I'm learning more and more with this. This is really interesting. It it's tells you, it, tell, it tells it'll, it'll reasons tell for you a why whole you're lot thinking of things. The way you're thinking. A whole lot of things, trust me. And so, it'll make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope so, we've helped you. Yes, yeah, so I hope um, helped you put a smile on your face and gave you inspiration. To break out of your shell. No, you're not crazy, but if you. you if you don't stop this cycle, you're well on your way to being there. Yeah, you, so yeah, you could you, be. You need to stop. Like you, you know, you, you meet people like that, you know, sometimes, and you like you see them on the street, and you're like, what the fuck? How did they get that? there? Yeah, how know? did they get to that point? Because yeah. maybe they started young, just never, you know, broke out. So, mm, excuse me. All right. Hope this helps. Good luck. If this was helpful Reach to you, out, make, make sure you post it on your Facebook page, Tumblr, and Twitter. Um, matter of fact, if you like it, make sure you like it and then hit the share button. I appreciate it. One million subscribers. Woo!